Welcome to the Fearfully and Wonderfully Me podcast, a podcast designed to help you increase your influence, develop your leadership, and maximize your results. Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's episode on the mindset of motivation. You know, last week's podcast episode, we talked all about inspiration and how it's an inside job because inspiration is what allows you to keep going when motivation wears off. That is when the external factors around you wear off and you know you have to keep going, then it's a matter of inspiration. But let's look at the other side of that coin from a leadership perspective. As a leader, whether we're trying to lead and influence our kids or whether we're trying to lead and influence people in our business or on our team, as a leader or as a woman and trying to influence others in a positive way, we are always trying to motivate the people around us, right? Now, now it does come down to we have to have the influence with them, the relationship with them in order to do that. But true motivation can only be accomplished when the other person knows and most importantly feels that you have their best interest at heart, right? That's an incredible difference between motivation and motivating someone for their benefit. They have to feel like you're trying to motivate them for their benefit versus manipulating them. If that other person feels like you're trying to manipulate them for your benefit instead of their benefit, they will feel manipulated and they will be resistant. And so totally different feeling. We've all been in a situation where a salesperson, for example, was just trying too hard to to force the sale. And we feel like they're just interested in making the sale at any cost. And so odds are we're going to walk away because we feel like all they're interested in is getting the commission that's going to come from selling the product. And then we begin to doubt, well, is this really the right choice for us? Are they just, you know, trying to put the sale on a a sales pitch that doesn't necessarily consider our wants and needs, or maybe it's not entirely truthful, right? We start to doubt their reasons behind why they're trying so hard to make this sale. And odds are we'll walk away because we feel manipulated Um, because that, that feeling of being manipulated, whether or not that was their intent, causes us to put up resistance, right? None of us want to be manipulated because manipulation destroys trust. And you cannot be effective as a leader if there is little to no trust in the relationship. Because if that person trusts you, then they will feel like you're trying to motivate them, like you're trying to help them for their benefit. And so that's a key Uh, important point. As a leader, we've got to be able to build trust in that relationship so that we can motivate someone, so that we can help them find their inspiration, so that we can encourage them and, and help them, you know, stay uplifted and encouraged. And it does require trust. Um, because encouraging someone is, is a selfless act, right? It means focusing on them rather than yourself. And that takes energy, it takes energy to encourage someone. Um, I was teaching, I was teaching a class not too long ago, and I, I got done teaching the class. And one of the um, people who had been in the class, one of the attendees, um, was you know we we're kind of wrapping up and finishing up and walking out, and she was just expressing a level of dissatisfaction with her her current job. And you know, right there and then, it's it's not, it's not for me to do something to just say, oh, it'll be okay. Things will be, things will be better. Like, I don't know that. I can't give her that reassurance because I'm not the leader in that organization. But what I can do is just take a minute and encourage her. Right. And that is a selfless act because, you know, you're just giving someone some encouragement for their benefit. And it's taking the time and energy to let them know, even if they're going through a difficult time, you support them. You're cheerleading for them. Even if you can't do anything to really fix the situation, you're there cheering them on and pulling for them. And that's it. You know, that's huge. That's powerful because that allows you to lift them up, right? That is motivation. 
when so when someone shares a goal or a dream and you just encourage them you don't stop to just say well how are you going to do that right don't don't burst the bubble by bringing them down to earth too quickly stop for a minute and just celebrate the dream and, and say wow this is going to be awesome when you get there and i don't mean be unrealistic right as a leader we have to be realistic but we absolutely have to be mindful that when we are in that leadership position it's very easy for us to unintentionally even knock somebody down when they get excited and fired up so let's don't do that you know let's focus instead on encouraging them and, and empowering them um, let them know if it's physical possible if it's physically possible you are going to believe in them and their ability right give them affirmation and then you know when it comes to empowering others when we empower someone we enable them right a form of that is giving someone the resources to accomplish something and the freedom to do it and this comes down to maybe you want to empower your kids to clean their room right but they need the resources to do it they need shelves to organize or they need trash bags to put trash in or you know you're going to empower or yeah empower them when when you give them the resources they need to accomplish something and the freedom and the responsibility to do it. And sometimes empowering someone means letting them try and, and they are not going to be successful. Sometimes empowering someone is, is giving them that freedom and that responsibility and giving them the resources and saying, it's okay if you're not successful the first time, right? It's not failure. It's just how we learn. And sometimes we have to learn. And sometimes as the leader or as the parent, we have to be able to empower someone, even if that means they need to fail forward, right? Letting them try and figure out what doesn't work so that they can figure out what does work, right? These are the opportunities that facilitate growth. And when we want to motivate someone, we've got to be able to empower them and let them grow through that. Because that motivation is going to help support them in that situation. And then I think it's important that we engage them. Engagement is an emotional commitment. I mean, literally, the definition for engagement found in uh, the Merriam-Webster Dictionary is emotional involvement or commitment or the state of being in gear. When someone is actively engaged with something, they are emotionally invested, emotionally committed. You know, you've heard so much of the research and the statistics out there about how something like three-fourths of employees in the workforce are not actively engaged. And I mean, number one, that's terribly sad, but it means that three-fourths of those people are not emotionally committed, emotionally invested into what they're doing or their relationship with the, the work that they're performing, right? They're there, they're getting a paycheck, but they're doing the bare minimum. They're not actively emotionally committed and invested into what they're doing. And all oh, that is so sad because so much of our life is spent at work. To not actively be emotionally invested in it to me is heartbreaking because life is so short. Let's don't go through the motions miserable. Um, so we have to, we have to, to, to motivate someone, we have to, number one, we have to be emotionally invested in them, right? There has to be an emotional investment on our end in order to motivate someone. Because like I said, we can't motivate them unless we have trust in the relationship, unless they have trust in the relationship. And that's going to require emotional investment on our part, you can't build a relationship with someone in order to effectively influence them if you aren't emotionally invested, right? You have to care about them if you want them to feel cared about. There's no other way to do that. And that's going to take time. That's going to take energy on your part. You're going to have to slow down in order to build that relationship. Get to know somebody. What, what motivates them? I remember uh, working... Um, year, quite quite a few years ago in one organization. And I was in a formal level of leadership position. And so learning and growing as a leader, I knew it was important to, to figure out what motivated team members. And so I didn't really know, 
at the time, I really didn't know how to figure that out other than just ask them. And so I did, you know, I would sit down with someone and on the, a team member in our one-on-one sessions and I would just ask, hey, w- what makes you feel rewarded? How do you like to be recognized? What motivates you when you're facing something difficult? Right now that took some time and it was probably a little weird for them. I'm probably the only person who's ever asked them that. I know nobody's ever asked me um, in the course of my career when I used to uh, have a, you know, quote unquote, a regular job. Nobody ever sat me down and say, hey, what makes you feel motivated when you are working on a difficult task? Um, No one ever said, well, how do you like to be rewarded or recognized? And so maybe it was weird for them when I just did that. But, you know, that was my emotional investment. Even if I didn't know exactly the process for how to do it, I said, you know what? If I want to know what motivates someone, I just need to ask because else, how else would I know? And so I literally had that conversation and then I, you know, I would take notes for myself so that I could refer back to those notes, you know, Hey, so-and-so likes to feel rewarded by a day off. And I remember one time I had a team member like that and it was her birthday was coming up. And not only that, her, um, her husband had been out of town on a business trip for like a week and a half or something. And he was coming back like, on her birthday. And so, and I knew one of the ways she liked to be rewarded was having some time off. So she had done a really great, fantastic job on a project. And so as I, I brought her in as a reward, I said, Hey, you know, I want you to take this, this particular day off. It's your birthday. You know, your hub, husband's coming back into town. I said, you know what, take the, take the morning off and just get relaxed and ready for him to come home and just enjoy the day. And it's your special, it's your birthday anyway. So sleep in if you want, go get a pedicure, whatever it is. Right. But she liked to be recognized and rewarded by having some personal time um, to herself. Whereas I can remember a, a different team member who didn't like time off. She, she felt like if I tried to give her you know, if I, if I tried to say, hey, it's okay to take the afternoon off, she felt like I was trying to get rid of her. And so it's important to know that about the people who are following us, right? How do they like to be motivated? Because it's difficult to motivate someone if you don't know how. And you're going to have to slow down as a leader and, and build that relationship with them. Make those emotional investments. And yes, it takes time and it takes energy. Um there's certainly an investment there, but it will reap dividends when it comes to building trust in the relationship and empowering someone, encouraging them and engaging them, right? If you're not engaged, they won't be engaged. If you're not emotionally invested as their leader, they're certainly not going to be emotionally invested in following you as the leader. And so it goes both ways. It's a, it's a two-way street, that emotional involvement and commitment, that state of being in gear is not going to happen by accident. Obviously, if if something like two thirds to three fourths of the workforce is not actively engaged, it obviously clearly doesn't happen by accident. It comes down to the leadership and the leader's ability to create that emotional investment by being emotionally invested. And yes, it takes time, it takes energy, it takes resources, but engaging with others will increase your influence with them. And that's key because you have to have that influence with them in order to be a motivational leader for others. Until next time. Hey, thanks for listening to the Fearfully and Wonderfully Me podcast. Ladies, if you're ready to take your leadership to the next level, I'd love to invite you to join me on a monthly call on personal and professional leadership development, specifically for women. You can join from Zoom via your desktop or on the mobile app on your phone. The the app is free. There's no cost to join the, the sessions. And I invite you to just come along and grow with me and the other ladies who are committed to developing themselves personally and professionally, increasing their influence, developing their leadership, and maximizing their results. Hey, you can find out more details and get the registration link at riastory.com forward slash leadership call. See you then.